Hello, everybody. I'm Father Stephen Imbrato, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. You can see by these sneezings that, is that a word, sneezings? <laughs> uh, which, of course, leads to sniffles. Um, I'm dealing with some type of uh, allergic thing in the air. Somebody's already given me stuff for it. I'm not going to take drugs. I'm not going to take Allegra. I'm not going to take Benadryl. I'm not going to take that stuff. It just whacks me out. I don't want to be drugged up. Uh, and it, it comes and goes. It causes me to sneeze and then, of course, a little bit of congestion, but it's bearable. So if I'm annoying you with my sniffles, matter of fact, here's a call to prayer. All right, call to prayer. <laughs> Now, I can't help but that when I blow my nose, that's uh, what I got. I'm a honker, okay? When I was in the seminary, every morning I used to wake up and I'd have to blow my nose. And the seminarians, uh, my fellow seminarians on the third floor, oh, as a matter of fact, actually there were guys on the second floor. <clears throat> and I used to hear that too. And they used to say, call to prayer. And when I blew my nose every morning was a call to prayer. Uh, so anyway, it's good to be able to laugh at those things that just we have to live with. We have to live with, uh, and I know that it can be annoying watching this, uh, and I apologize for that. I want to talk today about why do we march? The March for Life is today in Washington, D.C., tomorrow in San Francisco. Why do we march? And it's interesting that if you look at the promotions that the March for Life puts out, the reasons why they march, for me, are incredulous, right? Uh, I think that one list that I saw, abolishing abortion, saving babies, ending the murder, was like seventh on the list, right? And this is crazy because should be the only reason why we march. The only reason why we march should be to abolish abortion. Uh, my friend Jim Havens, and again, we do the radio show uh, Fridays with Father on the Simple Truth, Simple Truth Fridays with Father, 4 o'clock Eastern time today. <coughs> and plain and simple, the men's march, the men's march is to abolish abortion. That's it. The men's march is to abolish abortion, a rally for personhood. It's about abolishing the daily mass murder of preborn children. There's no, there's no second guessing that. There's no additional. All right. There's the wounding of women, the mass wounding of women. Yes, abortion wounds women. But if we weren't murdering babies, we wouldn't be wounding women, right? Uh, and so. Uh, this should be clear. It should be unequivocal, right? 
Abortion is about the daily mass murder of pre-born children, government-sanctioned, government-protected, government-funded daily mass murder of pre-born children. And that's why we march. Should be the only reason why you march, right? And the problem with the March for Life, and pray for them because it's going to snow today. Uh, Pray for the leadership because they're in the dark. They're serving mammon instead of God. And I talk about that all the time. Too much money in the mainstream corporate pro-life leadership. Um, So pray for them. Pray for the march. Uh, But one of the things the march should do is give everyone, the hundreds of thousands of people that show up, marching orders. Marching orders for the rest of the year. So you're coming here to march, but we want to give you marching orders, uh, an action plan for the rest of the year. What are you going to do the rest of the year? Are you going to go to an abortion mill once a quarter? Are you going to work in a pregnancy resource center? Are you going to start a Students for Life group on your campus? Uh, What are you going to do, right? Uh, That's what the March for Life should be about. But it rarely is. Now, this year, I see that they are focusing in on pregnancy resource centers. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? Mostly evangelical speakers. I don't think there should be any politicians speaking at the March for Life because no politician in the U.S. government right now cares about abolishing abortion. That is absolutely, completely obvious. There's no politician in the United States government right now that has any interest in abolishing abortion. The absolute abolishing of abortion, the abolition of abortion. And there's only one way to abolish abortion, that's constitutional person from the moment of conception. I preached on that this morning, so please uh, watch my mass this morning. Check out my homily. I talk about the contemplative life. I talk about controlling emotions for a couple of minutes. But then I get right into the whole issue of personhood, <coughs> the 14th Amendment, the Catechism 2270. Um, that is really the, our Lord speaking to us about how we are to solve this issue. All right. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit more into our topic, why do we march? Uh, But first, let us start off in prayer as we always do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's invoke St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning and weep in this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, those eyes of mercy towards us, and in thy clemency hear and answer us. <laughs> Doing the same thing as yesterday, right? This is so weird because I've already prayed it this morning. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning, weep in this valley of tears. Turn them, most gracious advocate, those eyes of mercy towards us. And after this exile, Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Okay, very simple. And I pray first thing in the morning. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's just, it's, again, I'll blame it on my old age, okay? All right, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy to promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. 
Inspired with this confidence, we fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer us. Amen. So see, I'm just mixing up the two prayers uh, towards the end of the prayer. All right. So... Uh, Consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary, invoke St. Michael for protection. Check out my Mass from this morning Mass. We did some Eucharistic adoration before Mass, my homily. Uh, the uh, uh, Fridays with Father, the Simple Truth Fridays with Father will be on 4 o'clock Eastern time today. We'll be talking about constitutional personhood as we do each and every single week. <coughs> we will be talking about... <coughs> The March for Life. Leading pro-life organization lays out political plan to serve mom, save babies. All right, now, I'm telling you right now, the mainstream corporate pro-life movement has abandoned the babies. Abandoned the babies. And the biggest culprit in the mainstream corporate pro-life movement is Susan B. Anthony. And this is the leading pro-life organization, all right, that has laid out a political plan to serve moms and save babies. Now, this comes on the heels of a failed, disastrous political strategy that Susan B. Anthony came up with, 15-week ban with rape and incest exceptions, and even, I think, health of the mother exceptions. Disastrous plan. <clears throat> it really is at the core of the failed situation we find ourselves in post Dobbs. Post Dobbs, with the overturning of Roe versus Wade, has uniquely positioned us to abolish abortion. One court case, one court case to abolish abortion. That's what my homily was about this morning. Two things, the 14th Amendment, 14th Amendment that says no state shall uh, make any law depriving uh, any person of life, liberty, and property without due process, nor shall any state deprive uh, any person equal protection under the law. All right, so the, the question is, what is a person? What is a constitutional person? And that's really never been clearly answered by the Supreme Court. Are the pre-born constitutional persons or aren't they? Your right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, property. Your equal protection under the law. My equal protection, due process, all of these things. <clears throat> At what point did we receive these rights? Our inalienable right to life. Due, protect, due process, equal protection at the moment of conception. All right, Blackman said that in uh, 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 Roe versus Wade, that if it could be established that uh, uh, human life begins at conception, which, again, they ignored the reality that, that, that science already knew that human life began at conception. And that's why he put that clause in there, right? He wanted to kind of like lay off, deflect any blame on uh, those justices with that deplorable Supreme Court decision. But he said, if it could be unequivocally, uh, indisputably determined that a human life begins at conception, it would render Roe moot uh, because then personhood at conception would be established. <clears throat> so we know that you are a constitutional person. I'm a constitutional person from the moment of conception. Preborn babies are being denied that constitutional right. They're being denied equal protection, due process, and they're being mass murdered. The mainstream corporate pro-life movement wants to ignore that. The mainstream corporate pro-life movement that is, uh, to a large extent, Catholic, Supreme Court Catholic, many leaders in the Republican Party, and of course the bishops of the United States, all Catholic, these people... Uh, I mean, this issue, at the head of this issue, is primarily Catholics. And Catholic, the Catholic Catechism 2270, all right, clearly states, all right, that human life must be 
absolutely protected from the moment of conception. And from the moment of conception, all right, we become persons, persons, and thus we need to be protected. <clears throat> so with 2270 in the catechism right there, the 14th Amendment right there, how can the mainstream corporate pro-life movement um, deal with the stuff that, that Susan B. Anthony's putting out, that Brett Attleberry's putting out, that Charles Camacy is putting out, um, Ray Ruddy, uh, uh, Leonard Leo. I mean, this is compromise after compromise after compromise, ignoring the reality of constitutional personhood, that this is a constitutional crisis, that we have an excluded constitutional class, that we're mass murdered, mass murdering. This is a, a national emergency. And that we demand the Supreme Court tell us, 14th Amendment, when you name persons, what are you talking about? When do we obtain our personhood, right? Nobody's demanding that. Nobody's talking about it. This is the scandal. This is the malfeasance. This is the evil that has permeated the mainstream corporate pro-life movement. That's it. And they can talk about pregnancy resource centers all they want. That's important. They can talk about child tax credits and helping pregnant moms all they want, okay? But it does not compensate for it does not make up for the malfeasance, the failure, the abject evil of ignoring constitutional person from the moment of conception, which is the only way we're going to abolish abortion, the only way. So I want you to check out Joe and Joe, if you can go on to YouTube or actually, if you actually um, go on anything, social media platform, I think Twitter, and you Google Joe and Joe, Joe and Joe. I was on the Joe and Joe show last night. Again, the simple truth, Fridays with Father with Jim Havens this afternoon, my homily this morning. So uh, this is uh, uh, my focal point. This is really what I'm consumed by. Uh, this is who I am and what I believe in as a pro-life activist that uh, the daily mass murder of pre-born children is government-sanctioned, government-protected, government-funded, and that indeed the only way we're going to remedy this, abolish this, is through constitutional person, recognizing what's already there, constitutional person from the moment of conception, with one court case. We don't need an amendment. We don't need a law. We need one court case. But the Supreme Court is not going to take a case that allows them to recognize constitutional person from the moment of conception unless we demand that they take a case, starting with the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, starting with the movement influencing the Republicans, influencing the, the bishops, right? And again, it's the mainstream corporate pro-life movement that should be pressuring the Republican Party to return to their founding roots, right? The roots of the party, party of abolition, the party of Lincoln, right? Lincoln, house divided cannot stand, right? So, uh, uh, Zahid, I, I will pray for your family, okay? We're going to pray for all those who are struggling with physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, okay? All right, so this is why I think we march. This is what the men's march was all about. The Rally for Personhood. And again, go to rallyforpersonhood.com, rallyforpersonhood.com. And uh, I'm updating that website today. We'll have the Catechism 2270 on there. We'll have, uh, 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 yeah, a whole bunch of stuff on there. We're going to redo the website and uh, get it a little bit more manageable because we want to use the website as tutorial to orient people to constitutional person from the moment of conception as the means to which abolish abortion in this country. Amen? Amen. And that's why we march, okay? All right. St. Joseph, my patron saint, born on the Feast of St. Joseph, coming up in, what, six weeks, seven weeks, St. Joseph, spouse of Mary, March 19th. Pray for us, intercede for us. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests. 
Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the church, and remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. Joseph, St. Stephen, intercede for the Pope, all bishops and all priests, especially in your hour of need. Alita, Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world, the end of the daily mass murder of pre-born children. We pray every day for those who struggle uh, with physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, whether it be clinical depression, heart disease, PTSD, cancer, right? Uh, uh, suicidal ideation, right? Any physical ailments, spiritual ailments, uh, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right, so our daily offering too, we want to offer up every day all of our trials, our tribulations, our joys, our sorrows, our work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time, all of our prayers, our mass, our rosary, right? Everything, all of our spiritual exercise, united to Christ on the cross and ask him to shed his mercy down upon all of our intentions, your intentions, my intentions, the intentions of those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each and every single day. Uh, souls in purgatory, the church, the Pope, bishops, we already prayed for them, those struggling with trials and tribulations, reparation for all sins against the sacred heart of Jesus, right? That's what our morning offering is all about. This is how we pray ceaselessly, pray without ceasing, Turn our day into a prayer, so make sure you do that every day, every night. Examination of conscience and act of contrition. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm Father Stephen Abrado of ProtestChildKilling.com, ProtestChildKilling.com. Again, subscribe to my Rumble and YouTube channels. I'd appreciate it. Look for my interview with Joe and Joe. Check out The Simple Truth today at 4 o'clock, Fridays with Father. And check out my homily from this morning at Our Lady of Solitude Chapel here at uh, uh, in Tonopah, the Poor Clares Monastery in Tonopah. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.